What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 14.5 beta 4 to register developers and soon to public beta testers. This comes about two weeks after the release of beta 3 and along with this release, Apple also dropped iPadOS 14.5 beta 4, watchOS 7.4 beta 4, macOS Big Sur 11.3 beta 4, and tvOS 14.5 beta 4. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 14.5 beta 4 and what has changed the new features. We'll discuss the performance and the battery life, the bugs, the bug fixes, and more. So let's start things off with the size of this update. And you can see the update came in around 378 megabytes here on my iPhone 12. That size, of course, will vary depending on the device you're on and the version you're coming from, but it should not be much bigger or smaller than that. If we take a look at the build number, if we go into our settings, general about 14.5, you can see the build for beta four here is 18E5178A. So we do have an A at the end of the build number there, which does indicate we are very close to a final. And also, since this is a beta four, that also indicates that we could very well be seeing an RC release as early as sometime this week. And we'll talk more about the potential release date for 14.5 RC and the final near the end of this video. And if we scroll down a little bit further to the modem firmware, you can see we did also get a modem update in this version. So we have a 1.62.09 modem firmware now. So that is a jump up from beta three. So if you were having cell connectivity issues or anything related to the modem, those could be fixed in this update. So now what's new in iOS 14.5 beta four? And the first thing, or actually the first few things have to do with the music application. So app was really focused on the music application for the past few versions of iOS 14 and 14.5 is no different. We have a lot of new features and improvements here inside of the music application. And we have more improvements and changes here in beta four. So the first thing I noticed is if we go to my library here and go to like something that I have as an album, like if I just have one song from the album right here, the show complete album has returned. So that was not there in the previous beta. I'll actually bring it up over here on my 12 pro, which is on beta three. So I'm going to go to that same song right here and you can see it does not say show complete album right there in beta three, but in beta four, the show complete album is back. Now we can go to that full album without having to go to the artist and then find that album and then go to it. It would just take so much longer in beta three, but that has been fixed here in beta four. We now have the show complete album back. Also the record label that you see right there, more record labels are starting to populate inside of Apple Music. And if you click on that, if you tap on the record label, you can see all of the top releases and the latest releases from artists under that label, which is really nice and really a great way to discover new artists. I really love that. And in beta three and kind of just a few weeks ago, there was only like one or two record labels that would show up, but now I'm starting to see a lot more populate inside of Apple Music. Another change in 14.5 is that we have swipe gestures now inside of the music application. But one thing that's changed here in beta four is that you can see when I swipe to the right, the play next and play last there, the play next is now purple instead of blue. So we have beta three on the left, beta four here on the right. You can see the play next is now purple. And it looks like the glyphs are also a little bit bigger. So if you look real close, it looks like the glyphs are just a little bit bigger in size here on beta four compared to beta three. I also noticed that we now have a lot more of the animated artist photos. So if you go to an artist, sometimes it doesn't load properly. So you have to go back onto that artist, but this image right here will be moving as you see right here. This one just takes, okay, there we go. So sometimes it's still a little bit buggy because it is new, but we have moving or animated artist photos now, which is really nice. Just like we used to see with albums, it's now for artists as well, which is really cool. Another change in beta four is inside of the podcast application. If we go to the three dots right here, you will see that we now have the share up top in this menu. So on beta three over here on the left, share was all the way down here. So it was below report of concern, but now in beta four, it's up at the very top, which I actually like better. It's not kind of lost and everything down here. And then one thing I mentioned in my follow-up video this past weekend is that Apple did change the subscribe and unsubscribe inside a podcast to follow and unfollow. So some people thought that subscribe meant that it was like a paid service or it was like a paid 
podcast. So Apple did not want to confuse its consumers. So they changed it to follow and unfollow now inside a podcast, which I'm actually a pretty big fan of. I like that better. It's more fitting in my opinion. Another change is inside of the photos application. If we go to the share sheet, you can see that copy photo is now up at the top, similar to what we saw inside of the podcast application. You can see copy photo used to be down here, but now the copy photo option is at the very top. Now, another thing you'll notice right here, and I'll kind of just skip to the bug fixes. One of the first bug fixes I noticed in this update is that the airdrop badge has been fixed. So you can see beta three over here, it would just show a blank red badge. So it would just be like a full filled in circle. Didn't show how many devices were able to be airdropped to. It would just show as blank, but now in beta four that's fixed and it shows the number two right there instead of just being solid red. So there are some other bug fixes in this update as well. So the biggest one is that inside of settings, when you would reboot your device, Apple would, or your device would ask you for your Apple ID and password every time you rebooted the device. But I've tested that twice on beta four and that has been fixed. So your device will no longer ask you for your Apple ID password after rebooting. Another fix in beta four is that the MagSafe animation is now back here in beta four. So if I go ahead and connect my MagSafe puck right here to the back of my iPhone 12, you can see we will get the animation right here. So there's the animation and on beta three, we did not get that. So I'll just show you just in case you didn't know. So if we plug the puck in right there, we put it on the back, you can see no animation. So a lot of people have been reporting that for the past couple of betas. I'm surprised it took more than one beta for Apple to fix that. We also have another bug fix inside of the music application. So in beta three, you would see that the volume slider right there would just pop up. It'd be a little bit delayed. The little dot right there is a little bit delayed by like less than a second, but there is a slight delay talked about that in my what's new video, how it is a bug. And now in beta four, as you can see, that has been fixed. It no longer, you know, just disappears for a second and comes back. It's there all the time. So thankfully that's been fixed as well. Also the handoff feature with the HomePod mini seems to be improved here in beta four. So I had a lot of issues in beta three with handoff, just simply not working. You know, even when I would lock my device, unlock it, play, pause, whatever I would do when I would get my iPhone closer to that HomePod mini, it just would not play on there. I would have to manually do it through this menu right here, through the AirPlay menu on my phone. It just wouldn't work through handoff, but it seems like that has been at least improved. I don't know if it's fully fixed yet and it works every single time, just because it's been very inconsistent overall, but it does seem to be improved here in beta four. And then also the issue with metadata not loading inside of messages when you would send a link, like for example, this tweet right here in beta three, sometimes it would just simply not show the full metadata. It would just kind of say twitter.com, but now in beta four that's been fixed and it seems to show the metadata every time you send a link. And another bug in beta three that I didn't notice until I started updating to beta four is that you can see my settings app is just really wonky. The animations are really weird and everything just seems a little bit laggy. You can kind of see the previous menu when I go to the next menu there. Very wonky, very glitchy. You could definitely tell it's a beta because everything just seems really off. So that happened in beta three. Not sure if it's going to happen in beta four. I will let you guys know in my follow-up video this weekend. And then also the face ID bug where you could basically unlock your phone. You know, if you have your Apple watch on with your hand, you have just have to put your hand over the camera in a certain manner where it looks like a face. It doesn't even have to be facing your face at all. You can like face it towards a wall and put your hand up there and it would unlock your iPhone. So that's a pretty big vulnerability. And I'm sure Apple has fixed that in beta four, but I will confirm after testing it multiple times and seeing what everybody else has to say as well, if that for sure has been fixed here in beta four. So stay tuned for my follow-up video, which of course is coming this weekend, just like I do with every single iOS release. Now, as far as performance goes, performance is actually really good here on beta four. It fixes a lot of bugs that I was facing in beta three, where beta three really felt like a beta. Beta four really feels like it's close to the, the final thing. And I mean, it is, we do have an A at the end of the build number. So it's definitely starting to feel like a more polished version. And like I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of bug fixes that I was facing. So that definitely makes the software overall feel faster in general and just feel more fluid. As far as the actual raw performance, like opening apps, playing games, things like that, it honestly feels the same as beta four. If I go to my Geekbench scores right here, I will start running a Geekbench because it has been a few since I updated. I never like to do a Geekbench right once I update. I like to wait a few minutes just for everything to finish, you know, the background processes and things like that. But overall, the performance feels the same to me. 
as far as just raw performance but we will see what the Geekbench scores say here compared to beta 3. So we scored a 1596 on the single core and a 4018 on the multi-core. So if we compare that to beta 3, you can see we have a higher single core, 1596 versus 1592, but a slightly lower multi-core, a 4018 versus a 4034. So not a big difference. And that's kind of, you know, aligns with how I'm feeling about the software in terms of performance feels very close to the same. Now, as far as battery life, of course, it's way too early to talk about battery life yet, just because I just installed this, you know, a little over an hour ago. So I will let you guys know how the battery life is here on beta four in my follow-up video after using it throughout the week. Now, keep in mind that we could see an RC build later this week as well. So we'll talk about that here in a moment, but if that's the case, then of course I will still bring you a follow-up, but it would just be on the RC build and not this beta so it will depend but anyways let's go ahead and talk about that while we're on the subject so today is the 15th i would expect a new rc build if we're going to get an rc most likely later this week and the reason i say that is because apple is expected to have an event next week so march 23rd we are expected to see an apple event now we have not seen any invites go out for this event yet so nothing is confirmed although we could see invites go out tomorrow on march 16th so stay tuned, I will post about it on my Twitter. I will also have a video for you guys tomorrow if we do in fact get those invites tomorrow. So if we do have an Apple event on March 23rd, there is also a good likelihood that we get a new software release on that week. So maybe the 22nd or the 23rd, we could see the final release of 14.5. And if that's the case, then Apple would most likely push out an RC build like I mentioned later this week. It really could be as late as like a Friday. It's really hard to say because RC builds are pushed out on you know separate days or kind of just random days, not necessarily on the usual days that Apple pushes out beta. So just keep that in mind. Now we could see a beta five if Apple finds you know a lot of issues with the software, although I do not see that happening. I just see an RC and then a final, but there is also the possibility of going straight from this to a final. So we may not even get an RC later in the week. We may just go from this beta, beta four, to the final next week. So we'll have to wait and see. It kind of depends and you know what Apple is testing internally and kind of issues they face over there as well. But I will let you guys know, of course, I do try to keep you as up to date as possible on what Apple is releasing and when. But yeah, guys, that is iOS 14.5 beta four. Like I said, we did also get watchOS updates and things like that as well. As you can see, watchOS 7.4 beta four right here. Now I'm not expecting any major changes in watchOS, but if you do have an Apple watch, I would recommend going ahead and updating. Of course, if you are on the beta on your phone, I will also have a video on watchOS 7.4 when it comes out to the public, hopefully next week at the same time that iOS and iPad OS gets released. And as far as Mac OS Big Sur 11.3 goes, beta four did not have an A at the end of the build number. So we could see a little bit of a delay in Mac OS Big Sur 11.3 getting released. It may be released like a week after iOS, iPad OS, TV OS, and watch OS. But like I said, we will have to wait and see, and I will keep you guys updated over on Twitter. And of course here on YouTube as well. But anyways, Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys do subscribe for a lot more content. I will be covering iOS and iPadOS 14.5 when it gets released to the public. I will be going over every new feature that is in this update, and there are quite a lot of them. So stay tuned for that. And I will update you guys this weekend on how this version or the RC build is running. So anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.